Um, so I think that Jake secretly organised Video Brain so that he could give a talk at one of the <laughs> future events. Um, it turned out that only like, a couple of months really need to go by before that was a thing that could happen. If you've read his article about Rainbow Six, you maybe have some idea of what's coming. It's a very good article. I suggest you will seek it out. Where can we find it, Jake? Um, I'll link it. <laughs> Jake will link it in the comments. <laughs> And so, without further ado, Jake Tucker, everybody. Don't be dealt with that. Don't be so deprecating for our answer. So I'll just, I'll just stand quietly for a minute while it works. <laughs> Bring this up. So, um, my talk is going to be about Rainbow Six. I mean, it's going to be retro now. Who here has played Rainbow Six? Is this the original or famous? Well, original, oh, original. 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 Original's good, because I was, I was just going to storm off. Um, so, for those of you who have not played, um, what is Rainbow Six? Rainbow Six is a, is a dashing, heroic counter-terrorism game where you go into dangerous situations with evil terrorists and you rescue hostages. Not this, though. This is, this is Counter-Strike, which is a daring, heroic game where you go and rescue hostages. Um, well, Rainbow Six is slightly different. Um, the good thing about Rainbow Six is... Um, yeah, that's why for this. Oh, it's much smaller here. We just fuck that up. Um, so, when we were six star there was an FBI hostage rescue simulator game. Um, Red Storm was formed by Tom Clancy, put some money into it so they could make like thinking man's FPSs and military strategy games. And so it started out and it looked like it was going to be a hostage rescue team game. And the hostage rescue team that the FBI operate, they go into dangerous situations, they rescue hostages, and it's all about the preservation of life. And um, this informed their design choices a bit later until they, they put it in the book that Tom Clancy was working on at the time. They said, hey, this could fit. And they, they pulled the license because obviously Tom Clancy was involved in both. Um, Rainbow Six is a game about violence. You learn to you learn the respect of violence in Rainbow Six. Um, a single bullet will kill just about anything. I mean, if you, if you go in with like, full heavy armor, you can take two bullets. And bear in mind that every gun fires fully automatic. That's, there's not much to it. Every time someone pulls the trigger, someone's going to die. And this makes violence really fucking scary. I mean, I, I went back and played through this again for the talk, and it's still, every time you go through a doorway, you're like, if I fuck this up, do I go right, left instead of right? I'm dead. And what, what you start to do with the control that the game gives you, um, you've got full and total control of everything. Um, you get dossiers, you get floor plans, you get every possible bit of information you could possibly need. So you can go in there and you can stack this deck so that when violence when violence does happen, when someone does pull the trigger, it's hopefully going to win your favour. Ideally as you go through the game, um, you get a little bit better, more terrorists die, less you die, but it's it's traumatic. Stacking the deck lets you use that violence as a tool. So I guess when I said about violence, which is lying to you entirely. It's, it's really a game about control. And um, yeah, as I've said, you get the control by, you get planning phases, you get dossiers, you get tons and tons of information that one would probably hate to read through. <laughs> pages and pages. Like, this man is someone's wife, and that's really important. But it's, it's all in the name of letting you shoot dudes before they shoot you. So it's really superfluous. Now, but, but what I give us is airplanes, which is a weird slide to put in there. But really, I mean, um, on the left there. There we go. So you've got that, and that's a that's Rainbow Six Rogue's bit. You you go up onto the plane and you kind of you just sort of play through it, you have this golden magical plan and you just plow through. On the right is a Call of Duty Force Mark High Club, where in fifty-five seconds you kill sixty terrorists, rescue a hostage, and jump clean out of the plane for I think it explodes in the air behind you. <laughs> I hope so, because like it's Call of Duty guys. And <laughs> It's a different experience, that's really fantastic. Rogue Spear makes you feel like a badass. I mean, you're still a badass when you're killing 60 terrorists as you run through the plane. But Rogue Spear makes you feel like a real badass because you're making nine other badasses walk through this plane, killing everyone, not a fucking scratch. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, oh, sorry, where does it walk down? There we go. <laughs> Just gonna go to the next slide. Rainbow Six Lockdown did a lot wrong. Well, I'm not a fan. Um, where Rainbow Six had a whole cast of interchangeable, fantastic characters that have permadeath. 
Lockdown had one playable character, and you had two teammates who were the same teammates. And if any of you died, that was the fail state. There, there was no, there was no planning. There was no simplification. Just there, you only had one squad rather than three running around. The missions were linear, and you've got this awful '90s action movie plot. So Rainbow Six is a game about professionals doing professional things. In in, in lockdown, you have you play like. This stupid sniper section that every game in the 90s put in, like, hey, now you're controlling the team sniper. Then he gets captured. Then your entire team, the most elite military special forces unit in the globe, go, fuck authorization, go totally on a mission, totally off the reserve, and just go and rescue a bunch of cells. It's, it's a plot spread out of the fucking 90s. And what it did, when they, they put collectibles in, they removed the planning phase, they turned the game into a shooting gallery, they did some other things to me. And the, the real problem with that is the game bombed, everyone really hated it, and Ubisoft looked at that and they said, well, clearly what they want is they want a game with less tactical elements. They want a Rainbow Six that is much more, I don't want to say consolified, it's a stupid word, but that's exactly the word I want to use. It's, I mean, look, look at that screenshot, that guy there is taking cover, but you can take cover in this game. That guy's planting a bomb in the middle of a firefight. <laughs> Is, I mean, I, I put Rainbow Six 1 and Rainbow Six 2 together because they both took the same design cues, but Rainbow Six 2 had the sprint button. Is you, you play as kind of one hero and you go into one location, and what you do is you plow your way firing through every part of Las Vegas. You're like, oh, here, here's a casino, I'm going to slam against every slot machine in here and fire at every terrorist. And the game takes away entirely the control you have. The control that I feel like gave you that magical experience on the plane or the embassy that you siege at the start. Instead, you become this god of war, fully empowered. And I hope I've got more. There we go. And I, so you get the more violence, it's more linear. You become, honestly, a shiny golden god of war. You walk in there with your heavy armor, you've got a sword, and you've got like a big assault rifle and you slam up against the first slot machine you can see and you start lobbing the fucking incendiary grenades and flashbangs and pretty soon you've got a small army. You know, like, you've just depopulated Taiwan entirely. And that's... That empowering the player is fine and that's worked really well for other games. I mean, Rainbow Six was from 1998 and uh, the other games, Unreal came out, Half-Life came out, even Trespasser. And all of those were about empowering the player. Shut up about trespassers, it's fantastic. <laughs> you can pick up a stick, you can put it against the wall, and then you can run into the stick and nothing happens. But then you can put the stick against the wall. <laughs> and, and that gave Rainbow Six a really unique feel, and I was always really excited. I begged my mum for Rainbow Six 3, she said, you can't have an awful shooting game, and I said, I don't know if I can said that. And he bought it for me because he desperately wanted my love. <laughs> And I played the shit out of that game. Like, I checked my next fire specifically for this. Remember that thing everyone used 10, 15 years ago? 500 hours on Rainbow Six Free. I presumably had to go to school, I had friends, I don't remember those. <laughs> I just remember storming the plane again and again and again. And it was like, if I fuck it from the cop, it shoots me one more time. I got an I never did. But they always me, always won. And when I think back about Vegas 2, well, I. I mean, that's what happens when I think about Vegas 2. I, I couldn't pick out for you the Vegas screenshot amongst these other shooting games. I mean, there's, there's a Call of Duty in there, there's some Ghost Recon, I'm fairly certain I put some of the new, call it, like, the new cards and Counter-Strike. I can't pick it out, it's all the same. And I guess what I'm trying to say in this very disjointed, I'm incredibly nervous kind of talk, is that Rainbow Six had something incredibly magic, and a lot of our favourite series, Time Back One's kind of nostalgia talk, had something entirely magic that made people keep coming back to it. And when you when you start changing with things, and especially in this case, kind of you take it away and you try and emulate other successful games, what you're actually left with is a whole load of games that, to be honest, most of us could take or leave. And I don't know. I guess in Rainbow Six. In Rainbow Six's side, that's, that's really kind of sad for me. And 
thanks for listening, I guess, for coming meandered through, but I'll make you much more. <laughs> spoken to most of the developers and read everything written about Rainbow Six, so I have like 60,000 words of research. If you wanted to know anything, now's the time to ask a question. Did you ever get to play the original, did you ever play the original Ghost Recon series? Yeah, no, of course. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, uh, I definitely played um, the original Ghost Recon series on Titan. Um, was there a further question or do you just want me to infuse about that as well? I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know, like, I felt like the Ghost Recon, the original, the first Ghost Recon game was a lot more exciting than, I used to play a lot of Rainbow Six, but I thought like, Ghost Recon had everything, after all. Even with the sprinting feature, it, it just worked. Um, the, the evil secret about this talk, because I prefer Rainbow Six, but the evil secret about this talk is if you take out the name of the Tom Carthy game, and you put Ghost Recon in there instead, or you take out Ghost Recon, you put Splinter Cell in there instead, nah. the exact same thing happened. And uh, I really liked Ghost Recon because it was similar. You had on the fly planning, you had like, you were still kind of the squad of elite dudes doing elite things. I watched, a, watched the gameplay video when I was writing this up of the, uh, I don't know what they call it, Vance. No. What's the newest one? Like Warfighter or something like that? Like Vance. That's Vance. it. Here like, yeah. come the robots. This is exactly the problem. Do you know how many variants of advanced warfighter and or advanced warfare there are out there now? How fucking advanced does warfare need to get? <laughs> but, um, you throw a grenade through the window, but instead of killing anyone, the grenade tells you where they are, and then you just shoot through the wall and they all die. That's not exciting or risky. Joke, guys. Um, so, in the course of that talk, you said Rainbow Six is about violence, it's about respect for violence. And it's about control, um, which is three different things that you think it's about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so it's maybe the site, but do you think video games need to be about one thing at the time? I think I don't know. I mean, I dressed it up because really, Rainbow Six is entirely about control. That was kind of the point. You spoke too quickly through it. Um, but I, I feel like I feel like picking one core, like one kind of core tenet of your design and stick into it is really smart. I mean, this works for Nintendo, but they're like, hey, we want people to rebuy our games because they had old games. That works out fine for them as a design strategy. I guess maybe it'd be nice. I don't know. Saying that makes it think like I don't want things to advance, and I do want people to try new things, but I don't necessarily want those new things to be like, hey, that worked really well in that game. Let's give that a go. Anyone else? Oh, man, loads of you. Good night. Um, have we played Frozen Time Maps? And if so, how do you feel that compares to the, the sense of that you get with Frozen Science, I actually, I really wanted to talk about Door Kickers as well. Have you played Door Kickers? Oh yeah, I know. Definitely played Door Kickers, it's similar. Um, yeah, um, Frozen Science is really nice because you can control every aspect of that fight fight and that's, I get that and I really enjoyed playing it solely because of the Rainbow Six connection for me. The same with Door Kickers. I like the last of us to respect the violence as well, although it's slightly different. But it's still not the same experience. So what I'm lamenting is that kind of first person, I'm going to barrel through here and take everyone out without any problems. You still get that frozen synapse, but when I'm looking at the top down, I don't feel quite as much like I'm the god of carnage. <laughs> what else we got? Right, I'm going to be a bit chilly because I actually saw this talk on Skype a few days ago. <laughs> um, so one of the things that interests me is when you're talking about Rainbow Six as a game about control, it sounds more like it's actually a strategy game. Uh, compared to something like Vegas, which is more of a straight <coughs> shooter, not it's obviously a Gears of War influence kind of thing. So, I guess my question is, do you think that tactical shooters have anything to learn from strategy games, something like uh, Company of Heroes? I believe you should told me this when I spoke to you in Skype a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel maybe so. I feel like a lot of elements, like, I feel like maybe it's gone both ways. If you look at Frozen Science, that's exactly like the Rainbow Six planning screen. And I guess maybe not Company of Heroes, but definitely the much more um, the much more micro stuff. So Dawnable Two and the expansion, they're very close in. I don't really want you to change sort of hundred orcs, but I definitely feel like that kind of focus on mechanics and outflanking enemies is something that maybe would be fantastic. Cool. Um, are we all gonna ask? Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm not bringing much of a shooting gun game kind of player, so you explain the game, you kind of die in one hit, it's like, oh, that sounds terrifying, I could never do that. But um, 
that kind of experience of the guns actually being super lethal and scary sounds like that is missing in other modern shooters. I guess I'm thinking of like Watch Dogs, where you are a big hacking nerd, and last time I checked, that's not super great with firearms. So, <laughs> I feel like that's more of a narrative kind of. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, it's fine. Um, and I would have figured that I think. Even though that kind of gameplay I'd find difficult, I would like Watch Dogs more if that lethality was in the gunplay. Um, do you think there are other kind of like uh, existing kind of game games or other kind of game standards that would benefit from the framework that you kind of enjoy in Rainbow Six? Um, I feel like it's quite. I mean, again, The Last of Us. I mean, you don't die in one shot. If someone shoots you, you kind of stagger back a little bit, and it really mess up your day. That's like the chest wound is a shit. Um, and I, I feel like it is something you spin around a lot. I remember back kind of in, in like the early 90s and moving on to 2000s, games used to be really hard. And I'm not going to turn this into a, like, oh, games should stay hard and mm. casual should stay out, because that's not the case at all. But I definitely feel like there's still an audience for that sort of game where kind of failure is kind of harshly punished and where things are dangerous and you do have to take risks to get a reward. And I feel like maybe that's not something like as we move towards having really similar kind of FPS games or really similar strategy games, I feel like maybe that's something that we're in danger of losing, to be honest. Cool, and that's about that. So let's all get drunk. Cool. <laughs>